you see this? Look at this. What a beautiful sight. <laughs> this is my Lelia Perinii. Thank you for joining me on this repot. It is December. It is the wrong time of year, according to my opinion, regarding repotting and cleaning up an orchid. But this orchid is telling me otherwise. <laughs> Even though there was no stagnant water in the pot or, you know, I had bubbles and gargles and everything when I was soaking it, this is my old mount. And that means for me, it's been in here far too long and I don't want another season without knowing what's going on in the root system. So, December or not, we've got new roots growing. Let's get it out and have a look. Big orchid. Beautiful blooms. Beautifully fragrant. Not very long lasting. This year I got two weeks out of the blooms of my Lelia perinii. And when you think that actually the orchid as such is not doing anything for the good part, in my experience with this orchid, it's like it doesn't do anything for eight months. Then it wakes up, grows a growth, which then blooms and then it goes back to sleep. <laughs> I have, I don't give it as such a rest period based on the setup. Oof. But what I do do is make sure that the reservoir is not super full. So we have a root growing around the pot. Let's address that. Part of it has already died back. No, it hasn't. It just looks like it. So let's very carefully see if we can salvage this. I always go super careful with every root until I see what the pot has to offer. And then sometimes I go really radical and do a cleanup like no other. So if that were to be the case, I shall warn you if you're queasy about seeing good roots being cut. There's a lot stuck to the edge of the pot here. She's been busy. And even I had her soak for a little bit longer than I would have liked. These roots are solid. Super interesting. They have some real substance to them. Almost twig-like. Very firm which tells me very easy to break. So I'm gonna stay away from the root tips as best as I can and see if she just comes out. Of course not. I'll just keep on squeezing gently a little bit here and there. There's more stuck to the edge of the pot here. This is a good one. I would like to preserve it but these roots, they are different. They get right flat up against the pot and I can feel, which is not a good thing, but I can feel my knife piercing the vellum, which is not a good thing at all. Thank goodness for the backup roots. grab the strong part of the orchid and see what goes on. Who's going to give? She's not giving just yet. Mm. 
these are all um these are all loose now it's just the lacquer holding on creating the shape of the pot that's making it a little bit more difficult Shake and pull, no go. Just keep squeezing. I would like to preserve the pot. I don't want to be having to leave the house at the moment. Seriously? Now we have her, okay. All right. And the roots that were stuck to the side of the pot, they came off quite okay. All right, for the sake of just cutting to the chase, I've already removed the support. I removed the microfibers. Some roots were stuck in there. One which I could preserve, the other ones I cut because I have plenty of great roots in this pot. I can be that generous. And I'm telling you, these roots are like twigs. So it's not like they would be brittle as such, but their, their structure makes them, yeah, you need to be careful. It's not like, it's not like they're sturdy. They're, they're really, they're like little wooden twigs. It's, a, it's, it's strange, very strange. So I'm going to work my way through this Lekka root network here. I'm going to try and get into the middle, clean things up, but let me have a look-see as to how I can clean up the orchid in the back, because you can see that there are plenty of pseudobulbs. I can actually take the back off and clean her up really, really well. So that's what I'm going to do now. Before I mess with the root system, then we'll see what comes off at the same time. First of all, let's get the jet on her. Let's clean up that rhizome so we know we can see what we're doing. I might be able to activate a back eye here. I just saw a very interesting little feature that I would like to encourage. This eye right here. Yeah, why not? Why not take it and cut the rhizome? Let's see. Can you see that growth pattern? That eye is over there. I could take out the two. I could take it back to here. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Let's give it another little blast of the jet. We'll clean up the cut area. because then when that comes off, it's going to be much easier to clean up up and around the middle. Always mindful of those new root tips. Where did we say we were going to go in? All right. With confidence, with confidence. Now, if I can salvage this back piece, great. If not, it's not really that pretty of a piece. But let's have a look-see if we can spot the F-bomb. There's nothing there. All good. Perfect. And I am just going to assume that there's nothing on the other side either. So I had a little bit of a hic 
there in my mind, but no, it was just from the debris. <laughs> I thought I saw a spot. No, it's all good. And I shall now busy myself cleaning up this orchid, cleaning up the roots. And you can see, you can see that these long roots kind of wrap themselves around. I shall be dealing with all of them now because I can see I have a great root system and I, can, I don't have to worry about maintaining any stragglers like this. So instead of going round and round and round and trying to fit something back into a pot, I make my life much easier and just cut it off. And I do that with everything that I see that is kind of brownish, you know, dead on the end. And basically, take off the bottom third of the roots and trying to get into the middle here because there are some dead ones in there. So I'm just going to stop here for a moment and show you. These roots have a tendency to get very long. This is actually a branch of a root, not its main root, a branch. So they do like to branch, but they're not proliferous branches. But once a branch establishes itself, it's a long one. It's not the main root. Anyway, I shall continue. We are done. Well, at least with this part, she's cleaned up. Let's dunk the end into some cinnamon. That was very easy because I didn't have to worry so much about the roots. If she would lie flat, that'd be great. Normally I take a paintbrush, but I don't think I need it. For this piece, I need it. Just wet it a bit. There are no viable roots on this back piece. I don't know if it's going to mount to anything, but you know what? Assuming is not knowing. I'm going to give it a goo. Let's see what happens. 
a little bit of cinnamon has spilled onto the roots, so I'm just going to take that off. So I've left two thirds of the root system on, which is needed. It's just because new roots are coming doesn't mean one has to go all the way, but it's clean. And I have to say, let me show you. Look, this is a dead root, but many of them are not dead roots in comparison with the back piece that has only dead roots. Uh, that's quite okay. I'll, I'll go with that. I like it. I like the results. And I'm going to repeat. All right. Last little thing to do is get some microfiber in here. Add the new support. I had two. I shall put two back in. And because it was pumped full of nutrient solution while it was having a soak, I'm just going to go now with some RO water and seaweed in the reservoir and only fill the reservoir halfway because of the time of the year. I don't want to perpetuate a problem in the bottom of the pot. I don't see a reason why there should be, but you never know. So there's that and my new support. There we go. Only for eventualities. And I have my usual little loop on the bottom with some lecker over and under. And I don't have to use all the fresh stuff, but I will because I've been working this orchid over the clean lecker. She came out quite clean and I've been working her. So there might be some debris. We don't need to take that into the new setup pot. And I can push her now all the way to the back. If I have kinked a root, I will definitely take that off. And we'll see how far back we go. I don't want to get too far back because if I have activated the next eye back here, where did you go? Yeah, there. You see, if the cut back here has activated this eye, I don't want to be pushing this orchid too far back because then, you know, we'll be back very soon. Not that I would have a problem with that, but you know, let's, let's try and think ahead a little bit. So that eye is, I've lost the set. I keep losing sight of that second eye. The one I would like to grow on. Where are you? Is that you? Okay. I wonder if that's going to make it. I've been quite close to the cut. I think I cut one suitable off too many because I got really close to that eye and I'm not sure that that is conducive. There's another one back here that could make it, we'll see. Having cleaned out the root system all the way to the center, it gives me a wonderful aeration now also as I fill up the pot with Lekka. I can see the beads literally flowing into the gap and I like that. Very, very cautious with the root tips in the front here. Really avoiding hitting, hitting them with any Lekka pebble. keeping the rhizome free of the leka until it has a chance to dry out. Let's do one more shake. There we go. And then now I can just fill up quite simply the rest of the blanks. Not worried about those root tips having been affected much. I've really, really worked hard to keep an eye on them. 
But what I really want to do now is get into those gaps down there and see if I can target some of the smaller leka and fill in the blanks in there. If I have to, I will get my tweezers out. I don't think I have to. For me, this last bit is quite important, as important as cleaning up the root ball because of the fact that the roots that are in this pot are used to a very tight, wet environment. When you take that away, you can also risk them failing. So that's why I do take my time right at the last stage to position some Lekka pieces accordingly. All right, now let's go. Let's see if we can protect the root tips. and then let go and let them fall into place. And leave her be to grow. And wouldn't it be awesome if we got a second lead? Just like that. We won't find out for another six to eight months. So let's finish her off with her nice label. And you can see that when we started the roots looked like this before I moved the leka away. This is ideal. Get them to look exactly the way they were once we're done. So, thank you very, very much for watching. My Lelia perinii is taken care of and can now stay there for maybe a year if she does super well, if not two. And from King and myself, have a wonderful day. Take care, everybody. Stay safe. Bye.